But you said something about how you find God or God is found in the limitations and in the challenges. I feel like just these songs that I've written for this last album, they came from that place. Mm. They came from a place of weakness. They came from a place of extreme brokenness and going, feeling like, honestly, I was losing my family. I was losing my ministry. How am I supposed to do all this together? So with everything that you guys have walked through in your family, how has that shaped your view of ministry or even just how has the Lord used that in the challenges, in the, in the limitations, in the heartache? How has that taken you to a deeper place? In your oh life? gosh, that's about three hours I'm worth sure. of one I'm question. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think because our son, Matthew, lived with mental illness from the time he was really young, um, we were just constantly adjusting constantly trying some new treatment or some new approach, something that would just help him live a more normal life. And as his illness progressed and he, we were doing, working harder than ever and he was getting worse and worse, there was just this, um, uh, this sense of doom almost hanging over us that, that something terrible was up ahead mm -hmm. and that we were helpless to change or, or control. And I, I think we probably all have those moments. It may not be as ours was with mental illness and then eventual suicide, but I think everybody has those times where you're just pretty desperate and it feels, sounds like you're, yeah, mm -hmm. you're talking about that place where yep. you have this sense that everything is gonna crash yep. in and you're not really sure you can do anything right. about it. Um, I, I really feel like that Rick and I have built a resilience um, through the years and the decades of sending our roots deep into God. Mm -hmm. That's another one of those mm -hmm. places. You can't wait till the, the rug is pulled out from underneath you. You can't yeah. we'll wait until, you know, the, the car crash or the diagnoses or the death. And then suddenly, oh, I guess I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna become a deeper Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wait, then you're, you're really in a deep struggle. But because we have spent over 50 years, Rick and I both became um, believers in Jesus Christ when we were very young. Mm -hmm. And so for more than 50 years, we've just sent our roots deep into the soil of God's goodness and His love and His kindness and His character mm -hmm. so that when the rug was pulled out from underneath us, we didn't crash. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been broken, we've been shattered, but not irreparably right. broken. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I think that um, taking advantage of right now and this season of going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into His Word into intimacy with God, into relationship with Him, so that you don't doubt His character. Mm -hmm. See, I really think one of Satan's greatest tools is to try to separate us from our faith in God's goodness. Because if we start doubting His goodness, then man, it's all up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Because then we're gonna accuse Him of you know, leaving us or not caring about us or um, loving other people more than He loves us. So for us, knowing that those decades of sending our roots into his goodness and his character has helped us be resilient in the very worst, our worst nightmare, our worst day has already happened. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine anything else happening mm -hmm. worse than has already happened mm -hmm. to us. But we're here, mm -hmm. we're still standing, we're still moving forward, we still believe in God's goodness. Mm -hmm.